As humans, when we picture animals, we typically think of a variety of birds, mammals, reptiles, and fish. But the vast majority of animals don't fit into those categories, the invertebrates. Although often forgotten, the invertebrates have evolved in boundless ways, with structures we could only ever dream of having. And they live lifestyles so unlike ours, they've inspired us to imagine what life would be like on other planets. Today we'll be covering some viral videos of these mystery creatures, hence the name of the video, Alien Invertebrates. So it's time for another episode of What the F*** Is That? Before we jump into it, I want to acknowledge a couple changes that if you're a returning viewer, you probably noticed immediately. I'm trying out a new mic. This is a temporary solution to the problem with the echo. I think it's going to sound a little bit muffled, but uh, we'll decide if that's better than the echo. You tell me what you think. Hopefully this is okay. And second, you might have noticed this strange instrument in the corner. I have obviously redecorated again, right on schedule. That is a backpack guitar. I'll show you. Just a regular guitar with a different shape. I brought it with me on my trips to South Africa and Namibia so I could keep playing, and I also had my friends sign it when I was there. I might decide it's too cluttered in this spot, but for now, I like it. Okay, let's get the general information out of the way, as always. Our little introduction to these creatures. So, humans, of course, like to classify animals as vertebrates or invertebrates. And to quickly recap, vertebrates are animals with a backbone, and invertebrates are literally everything else. In the last What the Fuck Is This video, I showed this cladogram. We're gonna use it again because it's helpful here, too. This is a general understanding of how big groups of animals called phyla are related to each other. All vertebrates belong to the same phylum, chordata, and then the rest of these groups are all invertebrates. So, just take a second to think about the diversity just within chordata, within vertebrates. Whales, snakes, giraffes, that fucking bird of paradise, those are all just in a single group. The rest of these groups have spent just as much time, if not more, diversifying into millions of forms that are completely different than what we're typically familiar with. By the way, most of that diversity exists here in arthropods. They have more species than all other groups combined. Over a million. That's just what they've discovered. They're, they're finding new species all the time. This planet is mostly arthropods. So from an unbiased viewpoint then, I think it would make the most sense to classify everything as arthropods and inarthropods. Like who do we think we are? Vertebrates and invertebrates? Dude, are you kidding me? We are so egotistical. Dude, if I was an arthropod, I'd be like, fuck you. Literally, who are you? And actually two of the animals that we're going over today are arthropods. So let's get into the first one. That is a phronema. Surface level alone, just looking at it, they're pretty creepy. And what I'm about to tell you is gonna amplify that feeling by like a million. See that little barrel it's inside of? That's a carcass. They live inside the carcasses of their former victims. You what? So let's just break that down. Let's start with the phronema itself. Phronema are, like I said, arthropods, specifically crustaceans, specifically amphipods. Amphipods kind of look like shrimp, but aren't. They're found in any habitat that is at the very least moist and are even found 30,000 feet below the surface of the ocean. Amphipods get to about a foot long max and are typically scavengers, meaning they're just a little cleanup crew. So compared to the rest of this family, the Phronema is like an inch long war criminal. Let's examine how. First, they live in the dark, up to 3,600 feet below the surface of the ocean, and they're semi-transparent, allowing them to blend in with their surroundings. They have two sets of fine-tuned compound eyes, one pair positioned kind of on the sides, the other one kind of on top or near the top of the head. These combine to give them a nearly 360 degree view, obviously not all the way at the back, but they have excellent peripheral vision and detailed vision, taking in as much light as they can at those depths. They have big, meaty claws to grab onto their gelatinous snacks. And of course a mouth, which combined with the claws, allow the Phronema to tear shit up. They're rumored to have inspired the movie Alien, which definitely fits along with this video, but it's just a rumor. Phronema eat lots of different animals, mostly plankton, but only a few end up becoming homes. Pyrosomes, siphonophores, and salps, mostly salps. So what are salps? Salps are barrel shaped gelatinous tunicates, also known as sea squirts. Here's what's gonna trip you out. Sea squirts are obviously invertebrates. Look at them. But they are in the same phylum as vertebrates. That group chordata that I told you about earlier, that we're part of, we're more closely related to sea squirts than fucking squid or ants. Weird. We surprisingly have similar developmental patterns, but that's a conversation for another day. So anyway, salps are filter feeders and move through the ocean with sort of this jet propulsion, contracting their body to allow water to run through it and propel them forwards. And during the sexual phase of their life cycle, their slut era, salps form long chains or wheels of individuals which are pretty cool looking. And this is the Phronema's bread and butter. They use their big eyes to hone in on their target, their big claws to latch onto it and start carving it out until they have a new home. They can even remodel by secreting chemicals that hold the tissues in place so it's not as squiggly. And then they move around the deep open ocean with this added layer of protection. And females will use it to lay eggs. She'll set them up in this ring 
around the sides of the barrel so they can feast on the delicious carcass while they're on the move. Scientifically speaking, Fronima cracked the code. They figured out an energetically efficient way to move around the open ocean while also providing a safe and nutritious place to lay eggs. But from the salps perspective, imagine you had to worry about some little buggy eyed freak coming to kill you, scrape out your insides and use your skin as a means of transportation and to lay eggs in. Like what the fuck? But I guess salps don't really have any perspective anyway. So whatever. Next. What are these creepy things? So long, long leg. That is a pycnogonid, also known as a sea spider. A prick, a pick, a pick me, a pygmy? No, a pycnogonid, a peculiar name for a peculiar animal. While it's easier to call them sea spiders, that is technically not an accurate name because they are technically not spiders. They are also arthropods in the same group as phronema and spiders and scorpions and shrimp and insects, but they're not arachnids. They kind of got their own thing going on. But honestly, for the sake of this video, just call them spiders. I don't give a fuck, who cares? Just know they're technically not. I personally like to call them pick. Nagonids. Pick Nagonids have been around since the Cambrian period, and so not surprisingly, they are everywhere in every marine habitat imaginable, even deep waters in the Arctic. And they come in a variety of sizes because we have found over 1,300 species. I'm gonna guess there's a lot more waiting to be discovered though. And they all have the same simple body plan, the cephalon, which is the head, and the trunk. And as you can see, they are literally all leg. If there's one thing I want you to take away from Pick Nagonids, it's this. Their organs are in their legs. Let me say it again in case you didn't hear me. Their organs are in their legs. Mostly where you see those segments kind of end off the trunk, but it's it seems like some species have like intestinal pouches or reproductive organs going out almost all the way to the tips. More research must be done. Like some of the worms we talked about last time, pycnogonids also have a proboscis. They feed on different kinds of invertebrates by stabbing them with the proboscis and then they slurp up their insides kind of like a smoothie. They don't always kill their prey because of this. Sometimes if it's a bigger animal, they'll just kind of take what they need and dip so they're more of a parasite. Just depends. They also have unique appendages called ovigers, which males use to carry lumps of eggs kind of like two baskets balls right here, which is the epitome of fatherhood. Oh, I didn't even tell you how big they can get. The one in the video was pretty small, and the smallest are about a millimeter long, microscopic, like the size of a tardigrade. But species in the Arctic and deeper waters can get to two and a half feet long, about the size of a house cat. Where's my house cat for reference? This is the perfect time to tell you about my coloring book that I just put on Amazon that has a picnic on it in it, along with 30 other spooky specimens. I've put out two coloring books so far. Let me grab it. Wait, you might remember from my other merch announcement, this coloring book. I put the same one on Amazon, just in a slightly different format. You can see it's a little bit bigger. I've put out two coloring books so far, the Deep Sea Edition and now the Spooky Specimens. Both of them have a pycnogonid in it, but this one is much higher quality. It includes more animals and more information about each animal. This one also includes a ribbon worm, a hammerhead worm, the Tully Monster, Hallucigenia, Humboldt Squid, Pink Dragon Millipede, and all of the other animals I covered for Spooky Specimens, including a Rat King. Let me show you a sample page. Mm. Bam! So if you would like to show off your artistic skills or maybe just have a new de-stress activity that helps you learn about an obscure animal in the process, I highly recommend checking it out. And if you do decide to purchase it, I would love to see pictures of your masterpieces because that would make me really happy. You could send them to me. Imagine instead I was holding a picnagone. That's a big ass spider. All right, next. We got another worm. I can't tell you how many mystery worm videos there are out there. I can make an entire channel dedicated to identifying mystery worms or worm-like creatures. This one is a polyclad flatworm. When this video first went viral on TikTok, a lot of people misidentified this flatworm as a black sea hare, which is a type of sea slug, which is understandable because they both don't really have any super defining characteristics and kind of just look like black blobs. But the best piece of advice I could give you if you ever encountered this question in the wild is to look for rhinophores, which are very prominent sensory organs that kind of look like bunny ears on the top of the black sea hair. Black sea hairs are also a little bit more vertically thick. Flatworms are just flat. Polyclad flatworms are found mostly in warmer waters. The warmer the water, the more likely you are to encounter the ones with pretty colors. Personally, I'm not a fan of the word polyclad. I think it's very bulky and it doesn't roll off the tongue very easily. That's my own personal opinion. But they are named such because polyclad means many branches. That's in reference to the shape of their gut, which kind of branches out like a disc all over the place. They don't have a respiratory, circulatory, or even excretory system in their body. They diffuse oxygen and substances through the surface of their body and shift out of their mouth. Where is their mouth? On the ventral surface, on the bottom side of their body, the perfect position to engulf their prey. 
like a blanket and swallow it. The bright, pretty colors of some species indicates some level of toxicity to keep predators away, as you would probably expect. Some species produce tetrodotoxin, the same neurotoxin found in pufferfish, while other species kind of just cheat and only mimic the bright colors of the poisonous species to keep predators away while not producing any poison themselves. Another classic case of a bamboozler. In either case, it's best if you don't touch them if you come across them. Not because they're toxic, but because they're so flat. They're like a wet piece of paper and they'll break really easily. You might be thinking, okay, this flatworm is a very very simple creature, very flat, not much to see here. So now we go about our business because that's all there is to it. No, not yet. There's one more thing I need to show you, penis fencing. One of the ways these flatworms reproduce, and it's exactly what it sounds like. Two hermaphroditic worms, meaning they have both male and female sex parts, duel with the goal of inseminating the other. The loser is burdened with the responsibility of parental investment, which is the much more energetically costly option, plus they get stacked. And that's all there is to it. And with that, I hope this video gave you a newfound appreciation for the diversity of ways that animals experience life on this planet. It made you grateful you're not a very small creature living amongst these predators in the ocean. And a couple things before I go. Since the last time I filmed a video, like three weeks ago, this community has gotten much bigger. We hit 90,000 subscribers, which is absolutely insane. So whether you're new to this channel or returning, I'm I'm so glad you're here and I can't thank you enough for being part of the first chapter of this channel. A lot of you have mentioned that this channel reminds you of Mini Minuteman, also known as Milo. There's a very good reason for that. We have the same editor. Gian. My introduction to YouTube was actually on Milo's channel. We collaborated on my TikTok and on his YouTube and Milo graciously got me in contact with Gian because I wanted to start YouTube but I had no idea where to begin with editing. Gian was down to partner up and it ended up working out really well. So much of the fun in these videos comes from Gian's style of editing. So please show him some love in the comments because he's the fucking man. And be sure to subscribe so you don't miss the next long form video coming out next week. And you can keep up with my daily short form content on TikTok and Instagram. And for now, stay curious. The world has a lot for us to learn. See ya.